Today, I am gonna show you how to use multiple reference photos and put them into one single painting. So check it out. If you're new here, I help other artists help get better at a faster pace and I save you time. So, reference photos. You've probably used them and spent a good deal of time trying to find the right one to see if you could paint it. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you what to do if you have multiple reference photos and how to merge them together into one single painting. This usually happens when you get a commission from somebody asking you to do a painting of some family members or some pets and place them in a customized background. Now in this case, I'm going to show you an example of a commission that I did of two dogs. Let me introduce you to Smokey and Maggie. Now a typical portrait for a pet would consist of a plain colored background or that cliche nature type of background, like a backyard or just somewhere outside. But my client wanted to be a little more creative, so we decided to go with those Renaissance outfits. And plus, I wanted to uh, have an excuse to paint these Renaissance outfits somehow, some way. So this is the part where the question comes, how do I put all these photographs together to create a cohesive painting? When you look at the original photo of the outfits, you can see that the collars are way too small to fit the heads of Smokey and Maggie. Their heads would be too small. I needed to adjust the size of the collars so that their heads would fit inside them. So I actually had to expand the, the width of the collars. And also, it would just look more realistic that the dogs would actually be wearing the outfits. Because if I left the original size of the outfits and just made the dog's heads fit in the original size, then it would look unrealistic and it would just look like the dogs have some humanoid body. And the last time I checked, I don't remember any uh, humanoid dog in existence. So this is the part where using grids comes in. Many painters use grids to help match the reference photo to the original painting. And so this is no different with this one. Except we are going to be using four grids this time one for each photograph. The hardest part about this is measuring the proportions and placing the grid on the canvas so that it would actually take the right amount of space. I have to admit, early on in the painting, I made a mistake. I made the grids too small and so that Smokey and Maggie did not take up enough space. So I went back, remeasured, and expanded the grids. Also, notice how the grids have an overlap. You should be expecting this as you will be using multiple reference photos and they will be sometimes clashing together, but that's why it's good to color code them as well because that will help you avoid some confusion. Then I applied the painting. The first thing I did was make sure that the heads matched the collar area, particularly around the neck area. After that, the rest was easier. Just apply what I had from the reference photos and transfer it onto the canvas. The rest of the painting wasn't that hard. It's just a lot of work getting the details, especially the details of the outfits. Using multiple reference photos could greatly help you with your paintings. It helps you with structure and protects your imagination from running wild so that your paintings don't look inaccurate or out of proportion. And merging some of these photographs together can be challenging, but just spending some extra time measuring can greatly benefit your artwork and can help take it to a different level. I have an old video of the time-lapse painting I did of Smokey and Maggie, which I provided in the description below, but I've also kindly provided some of the footage in this video as well if you want to watch it. If you found anything useful in this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.